In June of 2019, 68-year-old Mary Kay Wolfarth went missing in Ohio. Mary owned an antique shop in town, and when she failed to show up to open her shop, friends and family began to worry. I, I reported a friend missing earlier today, and I think we have, I need to fill out the paperwork or whatever for a missing person. And who's missing? Uh, Mary Kay Wolfarth. Okay, when was the last time you saw her? Uh, one o'clock yesterday. Saw her at an auction, mm -hmm. and then we were, we were supposed to meet again today at 3 o'clock. Oh, and okay. And she didn't show up, and okay. so I went to her house, and her mail and her and her newspaper were on the porch. Mm -hmm. Her neighbor said she hadn't come home last night, which is, like, totally out of character. Okay. And she has two cats here that I have to feed, so. Okay. After the missing persons report had been filed, the report would appear on the local news. An employee of a self-storage facility would watch the news, and he realized that he knew the missing woman. She had rented a unit to store inventory from her store, so he checked the security cameras over her unit. After reviewing the footage, he immediately called the police. My name is Craig Maddox. I work at Leslie Floor Sanding. Yeah. We have rental units behind our building. And uh, there is a lady that has been missing. I don't know if a report has been filed. Okay. Her name is um, Katie Wolforth. My reason for calling is that her rental unit has been entered by another individual. We have it on surveillance tape. Okay. And to my knowledge, that individual has no permission, reason, authority to go in there. Okay. My biggest problem is I don't know how to get it off this blasted security system. All right, so you want to meet with an officer regarding yes. someone entering her unit? Yes. Hello. Hi. Okay, so that's her van? Yes, sir. Can we just start the video and That's just what we're doing. just watch it? Mind if I take a seat? Nope. We got a cushion on. All right. I'd look at you this way. Then <laughs> um. The footage begins with Mary unloading antiques into her storage unit, and then she leaves to go to the office. While she's gone, the owner of the orange truck walks into her storage unit and waits for her to return. When Mary enters her storage, the door is closed behind her. After several minutes, only the man exits the building. He then cleans up Mary's belongings and drives her vehicle away. When he returns, he goes back into her storage and comes out with two large trash cans, and he puts them into his own storage. Thanks to the surveillance footage, the police were able to identify the man as Michael Olson. They searched through Michael's storage unit, and they found the trash cans that held Mary's body. The police would immediately send messages out to other police departments, telling them to be on the lookout for Michael. The search wouldn't last very long, because Michael had already been arrested for unrelated charges. Go this way, sir. Yeah, honey, she's I know your face. What's that? You ever been in the county before? Yes. I wonder if I took you. I wonder if I took you. Well... TPO, my ex-girlfriend. What's her name? What's her name? That was, uh... Is this an Akron? Well, no, she lives in the Falls. No, I mean, the, the, the charge. Was it in Akron? Oh, it was in Fairland. No, it wouldn't be us. Then. We don't control what they do. One day we might. Well, she... She, she comes to me. Well, you know how that is. Hey, watch your head going in there. Everybody, some child gets their head for whatever reason. All right, we're going straight there. It ain't like we're stopping nowhere. We're going straight. No detour. The detectives would put Michael into an interrogation room, but they wouldn't tell him what it was for. They wanted him to believe that he was going to be questioned about the breaking and entering charges he had been arrested for. Yeah, put this on. This is just a put this on you, man. No problem. All right. I don't care about Uh, Mike. Okay. We'll call you Mike. Mike. Right. And uh, however we stand on that smoke would be great if you can. Yeah, I'll let you know. Okay. 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 Okay.
let you go here. All right. Stupid friggin' in there, you kidding me. I can't believe they were fucking calling me for that. Seeing yourself all fucking dead. At least you're gonna fall off anyway. <clears throat> My pants are gonna fall off. I lost so much damn weight. Hey, what's, I gotta take a week, what's the status? <laughs> After about 30 minutes, the detective enters the room. Hey, what's that like you hit this thing? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, there's a little chilly over here. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, it is. At least it's not sweltering hot like the back of a cruiser. Yeah. Well, it, it wasn't too bad in there, but it was, it's, it's nicer in here for sure. Yeah. So you need another detective for this stupid thing? Well, this is kind of how we do it. Yeah. If you watch TV or what, but it's not always like how it is on TV. No, I know that. I know that for sure. It's just that. Uh, God, I just would love to know what Bob Rose are saying. Okay, we go by Mike. Michael. Mike. 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 Okay. Uh, I'm Sergeant Tony Stravaggi. I don't know. I'm with that. Actor. You. Uh, the detective Brian uh, Free? Yeah. Okay. Uh, since you're in cuffs, I, so I gotta read you these. All right. These are your oh, Miranda Reds. Yeah. yeah. Then I just need some verbal acknowledgement, yes or no, if you understand. Okay. After reading him his rights, the detective begins to question Michael about his breaking and entering charges. They don't want to scare him into asking for a lawyer, so they approach the situation like it's not really a big deal, and it's all standard procedure. Yeah, I just, I know you explained a little bit how I'm seeing there, uh, what ha kind of had happened, okay? Of course. Um, so, you know, I just want to kind of, I like to do things formal, and that's why we're down here doing this right now. Um, tell me how, kind of how this whole thing transpired today. Uh, I went and picked up some mulch. Uh, Bob and Ro uh, Rose always yells at me through a window, and hey, hey Mike, and, you know, my dad was leaving this morning, hey Mike, hey, uh, can I use your coffee pot? So I used, let her use my coffee pot, I was just hanging out today, my dad was out working, and I was kind of doing my own thing, and uh, she said, you know, could you, I mean, we were sitting here having a cigarette, Bob was there, you know, and I was like, uh, she said, can you open that door for me? There's a closet door that always sticks, you know, that I usually just, if there's no lock on it, whatever. I thought she meant that. She didn't know the bedroom door. And I went over, I was like, oh, well, Rose, it's locked from the inside. Or, you know, so I was like, you know, I think you guys always keep that window open. Why don't I just go around there and, yeah, could you? I don't think you'll fit. And I was like, oh, come on, Rose, I lost weight. Shoot, I can get in there. <laughs> yeah, and so that's what I did. I helped her get her window open, or her door open. Went around there, and it made it look like I tried to, I went to jump in, that's probably what the neighbors saw me doing, I tried to jump in first, and I was like, well, I need a chair. Went over and I opened our freaking bedroom door. It was locked, because Antoinette just was living there. Vince Lavari, the uh, landlord, he was like, I guess he tried to get him to get out of there. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm acting like I'm all nervous and talking and shit, but I was just helping him out getting their freaking bedroom door open so they could start getting all the shit out of there. So they asked me to help them get all the shit out of the basement and out of the, out of the bedroom. What was she supposed to get out of the basement? 
Uh, all the Antoinette's clothes, all the freaking uh, the bed that was down there is cluttering up everything. They tried to have six people living in that little place. That's a the hazard. You can't do that. Okay. And my dad lives right next door. He's like, you can't. He hates that. Okay. So, so just so I understand that you were they yelled out the window to you in the morning. That was at like eight thirty this morning. morning. Yeah. Then I was I was there. I don't. What neighbor called? Because I mean, didn't the neighbor see me doing mulch? I, I don't know which neighbor it was. It yeah. doesn't matter. But dude, I was doing mulch for him. I was, and that wasn't like I was charging him for anything. I went and got him a pack of cigarettes. Can you go get cigarettes, Mike, for us? Of course I did. Yeah. Okay. I've been I've been staying there since February of eighteen with my dad after I moved out of my that way at the TPO with my ex girlfriend. <laughs> and now I got now I'm freaking getting in trouble for helping. So you were me. living in that house that. Where your dad lives? Too? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Isn't, okay. that, isn't that where my address is? That's on my license. To be honest with you, I didn't pull yeah. it up. Okay. I mean, um, but yeah, I, I know, but I wasn't for certain if that was if you were living with somebody else or no, it was not. This is so stupid. Okay. And then, and then we when we came in, we arrived and you were in the basement at that time. Yeah, I was getting up the stuff out of the basement, and I, and all of a sudden I heard, "Is there anybody here?" And I was like. Fuck is that? And I was like, oh shit! And then I came out. <laughs> I wasn't ducking down like the one officer said. I was freaking trying to get some stuff clean for him. And why? Why wouldn't they lie to me? Why? Why would they say that I was trying to steal stuff? God, I've lived there for. I, I, I don't know if they actually said you were trying to steal something. Well, what am I um, doing here? But, well, because they said that you, they didn't know that you were in the house. <laughs> oh my God! Did you see how intoxicated she was? They drink all day, every day. They drink a liter of Kamchaka down here every day. That's why Bob has the the he has a blood alcohol monitor on his ankle. I thought it was house arrest at first, and I said, "Oh my gosh, what are you doing?" They didn't recognize me when I came back because I've uh, been staying with my mom a little bit here and there. Me and my dad butt heads. I'm not living there full on with my dad, but I will go down every once in a while, do some laundry. You only need to get away from my mother. My mother's a bear, but Bob didn't even recognize me. When today or yes, uh, yesterday? No. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah, Bob didn't recognize me. He thought I was Josh. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, exactly. If you get my phone, I can show you all the videos that yeah, I have of Bob and Rose and how. Michael acts extremely nervous for what appears to be a mistake. According to Michael, he used to live at the home he was accused of breaking into. The only reason the police were called was because the owner had mistaken him for someone else. The police are about to drop a small hint that Michael is being questioned for something bigger. They ask him why he shaved his head recently, and Michael already has his answer ready to go. Uh, it was like, like probably three or four days ago. I was just being goofy and just shaving around. My cousin's coming in from town, he's a Marine. I want to do something funny for him, and heck, I've never shaved my head before, really. I mean, a couple of times, but not like shaved it, shaved it. Right, it feels kind of good. I kind of like it. A little cooler in the summer, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's I mean, and literally, I think so. I went to a, I played courthouse baseball with a buddy of mine uh, back. I think I played from when I was 27 until about 30. Anyway, with Thurman Munson Stadium, I didn't have gel and I didn't have my hat, so I was going like this. It was in my face. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm getting rid of it." So today you were mulching uh, yeah. throughout the thing there. Okay. Yeah. And then um, is that pretty much all you were doing today? Yes. Around the house. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, did you ever leave? Well, yeah, of course I left to go get the malts, and then I went up, uh, where else did I go? I went to get the pack of cigarettes, went to the liquor store, <laughs> got them to drink, I was going to go golf, I had golf league tonight. Okay. Oh, I got itch, it's like... And then, uh, you went to the liquor store for them? No, for me. For oh, myself. Yeah, yeah, for okay. myself. Bob's not, I guess Bob's not allowed to drink anymore, he's got the thing. Okay. Because I saw him leave the house, but, you know, if it was an ankle bracelet, it would have gone off. It's a blood alcohol content monitor. Okay. So, and then did you use that trailer that's in the back? That no, uh, my dad, okay, so I did go another place today. My dad uh, called me up and he said he needed a, he forgot the finish gun. Um, and I was down there mulching. It's an orange pass load. You know, we got tools right inside the place there. So I had to drive out the bath, give him that, and I came back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was, um, what's the name of the address? I don't know the actual number, seven something, but it's on Camry Road off of Ira, out there in Bath. Okay. Is that his business or something? No, that's what we're doing a big addition of. Oh, that's trying to finish right. up that job. Is. Yeah, we're doing a cement hardy siding on there. So. Okay, okay. And then, all right. Um, 
Well, uh, they're out there talking to them still, and trying to get a statement. So hopefully we. Bob and Rose are here. No, no, they're not here. They're I have. Oh, down here. there. Yeah, oh. out there. I yeah, cannot sure. freaking believe that they would be. <laughs> so yeah, I mean they're saying obviously you know. I would. I, I'm, and the one thing I hate in this world is a thief. I'm not. I'm not a thief. I was helping them out, as I've always done. But I've I've come around when, when I was living there on the regular, I'd come around the corner there and I almost would run Bob over. He'd be face down on the freaking gravel from being too drunk. And I'd pick him up and take him back inside. Okay. All right, well, let me get things worked out. We'll take a little break for a second and uh, and I'll talk to them real quick and see what they want to do. And then what about, is there anybody yeah. I get us? No, okay. okay. Time. I'm sorry. I get it. I can do that. I'll be right back. The detective leaves the room and lets Michael complain about the handcuffs for a few minutes. When he returns, he brings the sergeant with him. When Michael sees the sergeant, he looks like he's just seen a ghost. He realizes that this is about much more than just a misunderstanding. I can't fucking believe it. They said that they, said that they didn't know it was in the house. What a crock of shit. Unfucking believable. Can you please take these shit off? I don't believe you. All right, Mike. Cool. Oh, I need you to all right. Oh, this is uh, Sergeant Dan, Dan Marks. Yeah, thanks a lot. All this over a suspected being in the situation. You're going to find a different Michael, no, that, right? that one's a lot better. Michael, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, Michael, how you doing, man? All right. So, I read you your, your Miranda rights. You, you understand those? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, keeping those rights in mind, we'd like to talk to you uh, about another issue. Um, so, today, uh, you talked to, you told uh, Detective Brady that uh, you were mulching. Uh, out there at uh, Coventry? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we went to Atkins Finest Mall, so we got the mulch from. Who was that at? Chopper Road. Oh. Okay. Um, did you, uh, well, we, know, we met your dad today, and uh, he was saying that. Uh, you met my dad? Yeah. Yeah, did you talk to your dad on the phone today at all? Uh, yeah, a couple times. Yeah. And uh, what'd you have you, you ran you, did you run out of gas? Yeah, I ran out of gas. I've been running out of gas a lot lately. They've been a little bit broke. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like he asked, what would you guys talk about you and your dad? Uh, like he said, he called me up earlier to go get a. I had to bring up the past load finish gun, and uh, then that was about it. So. Did he say that uh, we wanted to talk to you? We. The Akron Place? No, not at all. Uh, Text you, called you on the phone. I mean, I got a couple calls, but I, mean, I didn't. Uh, that was after I went on and dropped the tool off. I didn't talk to him. I was busy doing a mulching down there. Come, that's where he lived. It was, it was kind of a Father's Day present for him a little bit. So. Michael's father was the actual owner of the storage unit where Mary's body had been found. The police had spoken with him earlier that day when they were trying to find Michael. He would help the police find his son by showing them text messages between them. In these messages, he explains to Michael that the police are looking for him and that he should turn himself in. Because you were supposed to meet him, right? Uh, no, no, no. I had golf league tonight. That's what I was actually getting ready to go do. You weren't supposed to meet your dad? No. Up at the storage unit? No. Was it? That's what he told us. Oh, no, no. That's why he was calling you? No, no. Did he uh, did he meet up with you uh, with, after you ran out of gas? Yeah, he came and actually got me some gas. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I didn't he didn't say anything about it. <laughs> did he get you gas? Uh, well, actually, he just gave me ten bucks, and then uh, there was I was right by that. I was on Carroll and Exchange, uh, Carroll and Market, you know, to get some gas, and uh, he just, then he left. 
So your dad did? Yeah. Yeah, he left me there. What time was this? Shit, that would be, I don't know. I really don't know, 11, maybe 12, one, somewhere around there. I don't know. Sure, was it more like uh, one or two? One or two. Well, like I said, 11, 12, one. Yeah, I don't know what the concept of time really is. I had so much going on lately. Okay. What have you had going on lately? Just working with my mom. I have my mom and stepdad on a couple of yogurt shops, trying to work for dad, trying to make any ends meet because me and dad haven't been fighting very much lately. <laughs> we butt heads. You know, we've worked together, lived together for a while. It's, it's wasn't very good. Um, so your, your storage unit up there uh, up on North Hill. Yeah. Um, well, it's, not, it's your dad. It's my dad. Yeah, it ain't mine. Who has access to it? Uh, me and my dad. Yeah, okay. and then there's a... Uh, anyone else? Uh, no, but I mean, you know, I don't know if you know about theft that was up there not that long ago. Uh, this guy used to get into all the units, stole all types of shit. So we're Tim Bolser. I don't know if you know that name. But no. um, yeah, but me and my dad are the ones had the keys for it. But um, yeah, so that's... Okay. Yeah. When was the last time you were there? Uh, I was up there either yes, this morning or yesterday morning. I can't remember what day it was. <laughs> Were you getting something out? Or were you no, I was, uh, was getting ready. To, um, the lady who lived next door in the brick house, she gave me, uh, she helped, she had me help her move out this big stereo thing. I was going to spray paint it and sell it on, uh, what do you call it, Facebook sell or whatever. And so. Now, are you aware that uh, the, that storage area, they've got all kinds of cameras? Oh, yeah, yeah, because of the theft. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, your dad said sometimes you sleep down there? Uh, only the, only the only reason I slept in there is because I'm so tired from doing that, like if this represents the floor of the unit mm-hmm. you couldn't even walk in it as of uh, a couple of weeks ago so I was cleaning it out for him trying to get it functional again but yeah I crashed up there one night just because I fell asleep and I was like oh, I'm so tired and sometimes I go stay next door with Beverly and she uh, lets me go in there uh, the, uh, there's a brick house right next door to the shop and um that's the guy, actually, his mother, who who was stealing from all the storage so, units. Yeah, but she she evicted him. He hasn't been around in a while. So, thank I, I God, I haven't seen that guy in a while. Okay. So we actually, uh, like we said, we met your dad. We met your dad at the at, up there at the storage unit, and uh, I, we both were standing next to him when he was trying to call you, uh, and uh, he said uh, that that. Uh, you had gotten a ride by, from somebody that they were bringing you up to the storage unit. That's what my dad said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What kind of vehicle did you drive? Uh, Orange Dodge Dakota. Any other vehicles? No, nope, just that one. Okay. Um, Have you driven any other car in the last, say, week? No. No, I don't go. No. Uh, no. Michael's body language shows us multiple signs of lying. He is constantly itching, playing with parts of his body, and rocking back and forth. When someone is nervous, their nervous system can cause them to feel itches or tingles all over their body. This will make it very difficult for them to sit still. Well, like I said, well, like I said we, uh, we, were, we were up there, we talked to your dad, and you said that you were on the way, you ran out of gas, the truck was down there at Carroll Book or East Market. Yeah, Coast. right, and I was gonna get a, I was gonna get a lift up to the gas station to get some gas, but I never said I was going up to the storage unit. Yeah, he said, that's what he said. And that's he, what he said? And he actually texted you. Well, I, my, I haven't seen my phone in a while, so I've obviously been dealing with this, so. Well, this has been like three or four hours now. Well, yeah, but still, it just feels like it's been an eternity that I've been going through a window to help out a neighbor. And, okay. um, so when, when was the last time you were up at the storage unit? Well, uh, like I said, uh, yesterday, this morning, yesterday morning, can't remember what day it was. Were you out there Monday? What's today? Today is Wednesday. Uh, Monday. Two days ago. I've been up there sporadically throughout the last week. I don't know exactly which day, but uh, what's today? Wednesday? I felt, no, I don't think I was up there Monday. No, was it? Okay. Uh, were you with anybody when you were up there? No. No, I mean, I just pretty much rolled this up right so I mean, Dick, come, you know, Richard Leslie, the guy that owns the place, comes back every once in a while to hang out. Yeah. Talk. Yeah, Dick. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you ever see anybody else that has storage units up there or talk to anybody? Oh, well, there's a couple of old, uh, old-timers to my right. I think his dad's a, uh, I think his dad, or his son is Black Keys. Uh, 
you know, the, the, the group yet. And then uh, sometimes I see the people across from us, they're hoarders, they got all types of, oh my gosh, it's to the brink, I thought our shop was bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Jake Leslie and I, you know. When was the last time you saw them? Uh, I don't know, three, four days ago, something like that, five days. I, I literally, my days have been running together so much as I've been freaking going crazy. Is she like that? Oh, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's Dave and Ka Kathleen? Kathleen? Katie? Katie? That's the same name, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Who is she? Uh, she, has a, she has a storage unit up there, I think, with her, I thought it was her husband, Dave, or something okay. like that. I met him before. Which, which unit? Uh, I, well, I don't know which what the letter is, I have no idea. It's across from you? Across from you? Oh, uh, across from me, I'm the, in the middle building. Okay. Yeah. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, I'd say probably Saturday, Sunday, something like that. I was up there doing some stuff around the shop. Okay. Uh, it's very interesting watching Michael fall apart from anxiety and fear of being caught. Michael has already shown us that he's not the world's smartest criminal. He claims that he was aware of the cameras at the storage facility, yet in broad daylight, he takes the life of an old woman just because he felt like doing it. Now we see him trying to lie his way out of the situation he is in, but because he is so nervous, he can't keep his story straight. What about Monday? Uh, I don't think I was up there Monday. I really don't. I don't think I was up there Monday. I, think it was, I know I was there over the weekend. Well, like I, like I told you, there's another you know, day. Yeah. And we watched video. Yeah. And no, you watched the yeah, video. Did you talk to her at all? No. no. Uh, yeah, well, she, she actually tried to knock on, on my door one night. She said I was sleeping up there. I fell asleep or something. She gave me a fan if I was hot or something. So I had talked to her before, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I thought somebody told us you guys were, you were dating her. No. Dude, dude, no, look at her. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I mean, God doesn't make junk, but no, I wasn't dating her. Are you kidding me? A little bit all your age range. Yes, yes, and I, and trust me, after my last relationship, I'm not even looking for any type of girl. I've never had any sexual relations with her. No, absolutely like not. Oh my gosh, why am I even being asked this? Well, somebody said that you guys were dating. Man. No, we're not dating. Oh okay. my gosh, who said that? I, I forget who it was, but oh my gosh, that's ridiculous, man. It's a good thing for Michael that he has sworn off women since his last relationship. That should help him make the rest of his life in prison that much easier. No, I'm not dating this woman. <laughs> well, Mike, the video shows that you were talking to her Monday. So, what? Well, yeah, okay, I told you my days were all definitely. Yeah, like, and both of your storage units were open. You guys, you were going in and out. Yeah. Of both units. Were you, I thought her, that was were, were you in her unit? Was I, was I in her unit? Uh, no, it was right outside the door. I mean, I might have ventured in there to look at a couple stuff when she was right there, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, have you ever been in her unit? Not like, not before that, no. Okay, but you, Monday, you did not go in the unit? Oh, or just a Tony, I mean, I really don't know. I was standing there, I was talking, she cleaned out my, uh, uh, what do you call it, shop bag, and I just, I just am bad on the timeline of the dates. I really don't know, so. Okay. Uh, but I never was actually like, I mean, maybe right inside the door, but all the way in the back. No, I've never been in there. You can't even, there's a freaking wall of stuff you can't get through there. I guess she had not been in your, your unit? Uh, just, uh, she brought me, she dusted off the shop back and, you know, I, I wanted her to see because everyone that drove by I saw how disgusting it was. I was like, hey, look, look. A lot better. I'm actually doing a lot better, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, would her DNA uh, be in your storage unit? No, not at all. Not at all? No. Why would her DNA? Well, yeah. the reason I think we're asking about her is because the family made a report. They haven't seen her in a couple of days. What the so we're trying to trying DNA. to find her DNA. Why? No, she was. If anything, she stepped right inside my unit and gave me the. And she blew off the, the filter for my shop back that I was using. This is ridiculous. Okay, so on Monday. Her sister got a phone call, or actually a message left on her machine, mm -hmm. saying Katie was telling her she has this handyman named Jim Olson. Oh yeah, yeah her sister in Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna do a little road to work trip for her, but yeah. Okay. Remember having that conversation? Yeah, yeah. Monday? Oh, I don't know if it was. Mo I mean, like I said, it could have been Monday. What is Wednesday? <laughs> Sometimes I'll go like. 
I'll say, hey, uh, you have a, uh, about seven minutes or so, and that was the place. It was like seven minutes ago, but it was like a week ago. Or that's uh, my timeline gets fucked up every once in a while, and people are like, dude. You're an idiot. Oh, yes. The detective stops the conversation to ask Michael a question. He wants to know if Michael uses any drugs. If he does, depending on what kind, it could be why Michael is acting the way he is. Sorry. Let me ask you something that's totally unrelated. It doesn't matter. You, uh, you, you hooked on anything? What, what got you using? I, hooked, uh, I smoke weed every once in a while, but it gives me, it gives me a little bit of upper energy. Nothing else? Nothing else. So you so you saw her Monday or set or sometime in the last couple of days. Yeah, last couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Because she she's been missing for a couple of days, so we've been trying to find her. Uh, do you have any idea where she might be? Did she talk about where she was going? No idea. She did not say where she was going. No. No. Okay. Again, there's video, and one and it was this was Monday. It shows you moving her van. No. Yeah. No, I wasn't doing it, man. Yeah, I mean, video doesn't lie. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Should you move in the video? Move, I mean, you move, move in the video. You move in the van. Yeah, I guess. All right, you drove out. If drinking from an empty water bottle is not a sign of anxiety, then I don't know what is. When a person is suffering from this level of anxiety it can cause them to sweat more than usual. This in turn will make the person very thirsty as they'll want to replace the water in their body that they have lost. Do you know why we found any blood in her unit? Pardon me? Why we found blood in her unit? You found blood in her unit? Yeah, do you have any cuts from when you were? I've got cuts all the time from working construction, man. <laughs> all the time. Again, yeah. is, that, is that blood gonna be yours? Or? Oh yeah, this, oh, this is, uh, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a picker, so sometimes I'll get in there and scratch my nose. And but again, the blood that we found in her unit. Oh, is it going to be my blood? No, no. No, how would that be my blood? I didn't cut myself over there, so no. But I do, I mean, if I could have shed something, I mean, because I always do have, like, I mean, look, I've got I've got tons of cuts all over here. I always work in construction, dude. That's what I do. Michael, uh, I mean, we've been working on this for a couple hours. Um, I mean, we got us pretty far along in the investigation. There's going to be a time when there's going to be a, a narrative given of what happened. Okay. So, usually, I, I tell people that, you know, I mean, you want me to control the narrative. You don't want me to give the narrative myself. Yeah. Uh, we, narrative. We, find, we find evidence, uh, you know, different things, um, hair, blood, uh, different cool. objects. And, you know, we can kind of piece together what happened. So, I mean, sometimes, sometimes people fuck up, and, you know, they do something, they get themselves in a predicament, they get worried. Uh, I mean, something happened on accident, they get scared, uh, they try to cover it up, they don't want to, you know, try to explain it. Well, now's the time to explain what happened that day. Uh, what's the day? Monday? Whatever day it was. Tuesday or Sunday? I, there's nothing to explain. We're no. Just, no. There's nothing to explain. No. Well, we found blood in your human. No. Your children. A lot of blood. And here. Do you want to explain that? I mean, I got myself on some glass and. What about hair? <clears throat> what's left? How long have you been keeping your hair like that? Uh, uh, literally like two, three days. Okay. <laughs> literally like two, three days. Well, you said, uh, I think you said it was about three or four days ago, earlier. Well, three, four days, two, three days. I, like I said, I don't know how my timeline is, man. It sucks. We found lots of blood in your storage unit. Lots of blood. We found sticks, instruments with a lot of blood. No fucking way. Like Sergeant Marks. Yeah, someone's got a train here or something. Like that. ridiculous. No, you just said that the only two people that get have access to your unit. But somebody, like, if you ever look up in the saw, that fucking Tim, he's trying. I bet you he's trying to get back. No. 
I, I don't think that's the one that they're We have video of you talking to Katie. Well, yeah, I've talked to Katie before. Talking to her on Monday, driving her van away. Her keys, so her keys were found in your dad's basement today. You know, he me. No. How did Tim get out there and, and plant that? Tim fucking, he's uh, fucking out. No, no, no. That's, that's not the narrative you want to try to deal with. No, yeah. that's, that's not going to work for you, buddy. Something bad happened to Katie. You know it. You know what happened. So like Sergeant Mark has given you the opportunity to give us your narrative. Yeah. Jesus. So stupid. This fucking life reminded me. What happened? Oh, man. Because she wanted to give you some money. She wanted to give you a job. What? Michael remains quiet, most likely thinking about how he can get out of the situation he is in. He doesn't realize that just by sitting there saying nothing, he is making himself appear far more guilty. After contemplating his options, Michael finally comes clean about what happened. We have uh, yeah. the sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us what happened. I mean, it's probably going to help you. I mean, you, you can't you can't feel good holding this in. No, 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 no. I just tell us what happened. I snapped, man. I snapped. I just about something, what? something came over me. I don't know. What what yeah. makes you? My ex girlfriend too. She it was a downfall. It's not a, like it's not she doesn't want to hold a gun to me. Either. My ex girlfriend, but she made me a different person because of her toxic narcissistic race. I was mentally, verbally, emotionally abused. I don't know. Just I snapped and Katie said something about my fucking ex girlfriend. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what? Well, yeah, yeah. I snapped. Tell us what happened. I mean, I think you know what happened. I think you're just getting me to want to say it. Dude, that, that's just why I told you. This is your narrative. This is your chance to say for your story. Yeah, well, I just... Are you just a cold-blooded... No, I just... Homicidal maniac? Not, not at all. Or was it heat just, of the moment? Heat of the moment type of thing. Dude, I snapped. So uh, take us through it, man. Nah, I was just... Went over there, hit her on the head. That was it. What'd you hit her on the head? Nice. Yes, I'm gonna... So like a metal pipe, a walking mm -hmm. stick... Something in there. Wooden... Nah, yeah, it was... Actually, a... Uh, Piece of the, I don't need to see that yet. A piece of the fireplace stick looking one that was broken. I don't know what I just I just saw it, I grabbed it, and I just like fucking snapped it. Did you do it in her her unit or yeah. I don't know. I didn't. And then I just I don't know, I just tried to get rid of the evidence, but it was a stupid idea to do it because I knew about those fucking cameras when was... Where's the van? <sighs> Yeah, I parked it in the hood somewhere. How the keys end up down at your dad's? I, I took the key off there and I was going to get rid of those. I was going to wipe them off. It was dumb. I shouldn't have never done it. Obviously, I'm going to jail for the rest of my life, but it's a snap, man. I've been so emotionally and personally abused. You have no idea. I got a mother that fucking, you know, staying with I'm 35 years old. So there's my narrative a little bit. Can you explain what our clothes got ripped? Now that Michael has confessed, he stops moving his body and he appears calmer. His voice also levels out as he puts his body into a more comfortable position. Sorry, I'm not making a lot of this stuff up. I mean, no, no, it's just, no, no. Yeah, it's just I'm, I'm having a hard time. Like, you know. Know. So then when you went back to the van and moved it to the hood? Yeah, yeah, because I was trying to get... So, I mean, I mean, obviously, somebody if you're looking for it, look right next to the office, it'd be pretty easy. Pretty close. Yeah. Uh, what about her uh, cell phone? Um, it was, I think, in the car or... or did you trade it for something? No, no, I did not trade it. I don't pawn stuff like that. I earn my money. Okay. 
No, her cell phone was an Android anyway, it looked like shit. <laughs> and plus, I've never been to a pawn shop really in my life, maybe one time down in West Virginia. And that was when I was like 22, 23, so that's the reason. So, where do we go from here? Well, I mean, you know you're going to get arrested. You get a ring, you get a bond, you get an attorney. Yeah, I actually couldn't use a job. Mark Bowie was my attorney for the TPO thing, maybe they'll represent me. Well, there's only certain attorneys can represent oh, yeah, the cases of the country. So, I mean, in the long run, you could sit there and say, hey, I mean, I, I came off the bullshit story, and you can look at the judge and ask for some. You could ask the family person for doing this, and the, no, the no. judge, they give you a little bit of mercy. And yeah, I just, I mean, I'll spend the rest of my life in prison. I don't want to die because I can't do good works. I, I've been a good person my whole life. I just, I snapped because people have been. Right, my ass. Well, you were, you were talking to her. What did she say that reminded you of your girlfriend? She were kind of talking about her a little bit, and she said that maybe maybe you did this to her, whatever. I mean, so she was blaming you? Mm-hmm. And I never did a fucking thing to that ex girlfriend of mine. I treated her like a fucking queen. So you said you just saw something laying there? Mm-hmm. Right. Anything else you can think of um, that you want to know? I mean, I'm sorry. If you have any other questions, I mean, you can ask me, but not that I can think of. I think we're pretty much. I got a confession. I got a confession, didn't I? Well, <laughs> like, like I told you, I, mean, I think we knew enough. It's just up to yeah, you for your narrative. Well, I just, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have never done it. I just, for some reason, I snapped. And uh, well, like he said, it was you getting it off your chest. Does it make you look like a cold-blooded killer? I'm not, a cold, I'm, I'm not. I mean, this is one stupid thing that I'll never be able to live down, but... Okay. All right, well, I might just have my hand up my hands, so I'd shake your hand. No, yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, I don't think you want that, so... No, I'm not shaking your hand. All right, before we get into the town, we'll try to get you a second. Yeah, I will. All right. That. Thank you. Michael would be charged with murder, but strangely enough, he continued to claim that he was innocent of the charges brought against him. Prosecution would have more than enough evidence to get a conviction, and Michael would be sentenced to life in prison for his crimes. You're going to jail. Uh, oh, yeah. So. But I'm saying he's gonna unhandcuff you, but I need my hand. Oh, that's why. I, that's, no, no, no. The pull over. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That's why I keep it up here just for this instance. I, I appreciate it. Because yeah. I know it's, just, it's a miserable building, man. It's either freezing that cold or freezing that hot. You can leave the pants on. Okay. Thank you. Um, I mean, I could put my shorts back on, but I have a belt, and they, you know, they took my belt. Right. There's. there's okay. He need pants. No, no, no. He can have his pants. Yeah. He can carry them. Yeah. I have some pants. go like this. Oh no, you need them. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I would love to hear your thoughts on this case, so please share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time, here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.